Welcome back to ATL Day Ones. I'm Tanitra Batiste. This is my boy Jarvis Davis. And we appreciate you guys coming back to join us as we deep dive into our conversation about the Hawks. We also appreciate you guys following us and subscribing and liking us on YouTube at our Locked On Sports Atlanta channel. So that's for our show, ATL Day Ones. That's for Hitting Hard with John Chuckery. That is for Mark Zeno's A to Z show and even a Braves postcast with Grant McCauley, the guru for the Braves. Mm -hmm. so excited about what we are able to bring you guys here on the Atlanta sports scene. And again, appreciate you rocking with us on YouTube and also you're able to listen on any audio platform. So Jarvis, State Farm Arena, last night, playing game. One of those situations where nobody wanted to be there. Nobody in, you know, the Hawks fan base, no Hawk, no, or, no member of the front office, but we here, right? Right, <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. You find yourself in the playing round, but thank goodness, at least you're able to host that first game. And that was so critical and so crucial last night. And what turned out to be, and we know a couple days ago, the line was four and a half. And then it changed yesterday to five and a half. And then ultimately they won by 29 points. Hawks beat the Hornets 132-103. And when you look at the stat line, Jarvis, from last night, every statistical category, the Hawks won. And whether that was field goal percentage, 52%, or three points, 50%, or rebounds, 54 to 41. Even fast break, where even though the Hornets had 11 fast break points to our six fast break points. They are the number two team in the league in terms of scoring points in transition. So to be able to really stop them and then beat them somewhat at their game, that to me was amazing. And Trey was going to Trey, whether that was dishing and his players delivering or whether that was the second half where, you know, he kind of found his footing scoring wise. But I want to go back to dishing and players delivering because that is really where the Hawks won that game last night. Who for you stood out as far as who other than Trey was key to that victory? Well, well before I, before I do, before I answer, I, I do want to touch on one quick thing. And I thought it was kind of fascinating when you saw how that game started out, right? The, you know, um, the Charlotte Hornets started to, you know, trap, really hard in the beginning of that game. And essentially, when you think about that, right, so essentially you basically put the best attribute on Trey Young. Now, he's an amazing scorer. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. He can create like crazy. But the one thing that he is so good at and it comes easy to him mm -hmm. is finding the open guy. And essentially, that's what you ask him to do. Yeah. We're going to force you to pass the ball. Yep. Okay, all right. Do Does it. that really make sense? All right, okay, I'll do that. And and that's what that's what you, that's what you saw happen. That's why mm -hmm. the the Hawks were able to get up to a, such a big lead. But yeah. Trey was like three for thirteen in the first half. So yeah, it was crazy. Was just it was crazy yeah. how he was able to affect the game, and he had such an awful shooting night, like yeah. specifically in the first half. So right. I just think that was just something that I just thought was fascinating. All right. Well, to piggyback on that, before you go to, to answer my question, to piggyback uh, on what you're saying, that has actually been one of the areas low key that he's, he's improved on because right. even though he was really good at passing, he was also, his assist to turnover ratio was also troubling for a yeah, long yeah, time, the first yeah. couple of years of his career and yes. even the first part of this year, but slowly but surely the assist numbers, continue to go up and the turnover numbers continue to go down. And I attribute that to maturity, vision, trust in his teammates, and then them being able to deliver as well. And then to your point, just to piggyback on what you said about the trap, I was actually surprised that the Hornets did not make adjustments in the second yeah. half. Instead, right. they continued to trap or they seemed a little bit confused and they would try to bring help and they would overextend themselves, yep. bring the help too late. And then it was, and of course, that's why you saw that debacle of, and that meltdown that ended up being 42 points to 24 points in the third quarter. Yeah, that was one. Of the, and speaking of the third quarter, the player that I thought that was the X factor and you called it T DeAndre Hunter. Oh yeah. my goodness. I was so pleased. Yes. He's, a, he's one of those players that I just get so happy. 
when I when I see him playing really well. And it was just and I was I think he started feeling himself at one point, right? Right in the third quarter. He he uh he kind of he got the ball, brought up um Trey had passed it to him, he got he brought up the court and he called for the pick. The pick came and he was starting to get into the offense and then he went in and got um um Forcing to foul him and everything, yes. and went to the free throw line. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, dude, this is <laughs> yeah. this is what we've been asking for. Lord, like, yes. dude, this type of confidence, that type of confidence. DeAndre Hunter is playing with that type of confidence. That that type of confidence. Oh my goodness, this team can be scary. I said it on Twitter last night at John D ninety. Give me a follow. And follow her at a teenage as well. It's right there on the screen. Don't you see that? It's right there. So, but I think that that's one of the things that you have to really just take in, like take it in and just say, okay, man, this is something that could turn into something like it did last year. Yes. I know we've been saying it all year, but oh my goodness, last night, just to be able to see DeAndre drop 16 in the third quarter. Yeah. That is absolutely amazing to you. I, I don't even know what else to say about it. Yeah, especially when you think about the fact that he had some open looks in that first quarter that just didn't go down. And he stuck with it. And that's something Nate McMillan talked about post game. The fact that he had been encouraging all of his players. If right. that happens, you know, if you if you're not hitting Stay that it Keep Yeah, stick with it. Just stay with it. Just mm-hmm. keep shooting until the shot comes. And I saw that with him like he literally especially in that second quarter, it was like, okay, can't get yeah. the shots to fall, but I'm wide gonna open shots too. Exactly. Yeah. Wide open shots. But he was like, okay, I'm going to defend. And so he was going out on the wing. He was affecting the shots um, inside as well. And that kind of slowly seemed to get him in rhythm. And then, like you said, just third quarter, it was like Dre day. I mean, yeah, it was, just, yeah, it was crazy. So yeah, he, <laughs> right. he was tremendous last night. And like you said, that makes us smile because all we want in terms of, really a winning formula is not to see I'm happy with Trey getting 24. I don't like to see him have be eight of 24 from the field or one of seven from three, but I'm okay with him scoring in the mid twenties, as long as everybody else is doing their job. If everybody else does their part and does their job, or at least six of the in the eight man rotation, then you get a win out of the Hawks. And that was the other thing that I saw last night. Seemed like everybody was really focused laser focused on okay this is my job this is why i've been put in the game at this moment and i'm going to do exactly i understand the assignment and i'm going to deliver i, I like seeing that last night yeah from bogdan bogdanovich yeah or dan dan was out there hooping last night um you know when you think about even even delon right like, i knew you were gonna say that i knew like, it. like come on they're like delon right out there hooping i'm sitting up here like what is going on? Who is this team? And where did y'all find these dudes? Because a lot of times throughout this 82 game season, super long season, yeah. like these guys have, I, these guys didn't exist. Like no. this DeLon Wright to me did not exist. I think no. DeLon Wright has been playing lights out these past yes. few games to, coming down toward the end of the season. And yeah. I, I just, and it, and it just, it, it makes me happy. I'm excited. Like, you see how many times I say happy in this segment? Like, right. <laughs> you know, so, uh, for, yeah, so for the bench mob to get going like that, yeah. this team is super, super fun to watch. And, and like I said, I am super excited about what's to come. Like, can we get some more of this? Can we yeah, get some more yeah. of this? <laughs> I, I really feel good about what they, they'll be able to do tomorrow night. Now, you know, there's still set speculation about whether Jared Allen will play yep. Willie Wony Willie Wony so we'll Got see that final. yeah we'll see tomorrow night but to me that was also encouraging the fact that we saw so much good play inside i mean the active hands Jarvis now that's another thing that made me happy and excited the mm-hmm. active hands that remained active you know i always love to call them pickpockets because they'll steal a ball from you in a heartbeat but right. them being on those offensive boards that was so critical because Charlotte they like to run. They like to run and gun to take a term, you know, for football, but they like to run. You can't run if you can't, you know, get a rebound and get out and transition. So right. they really, really kind of cut that. I don't know, cut the snake off at the head, if you will. And there you we go. Just hope, yeah, we just hope to see the same tomorrow because you've got two real pieces there to focus. Well, three. 
Obviously, Darius Garland definitely yeah. are going to have to contain him somehow. But Evan Mobley, Evan even Mobley. more so than Jared Allen, has been Hell the one yeah. who's given the Hawks the most trouble, even though the Hawks won three out of the four games against the Cavs in the regular season. But it's been Evan Mobley, and then it's been somebody off the bench, typically Kevin Love, but somebody off the bench who's also been that X factor for the Cavs. And, of course, we'll talk more about it tomorrow. But as for today, it's an opportunity for us to at least celebrate for a moment that they are who we thought they were. Exactly. And I've got to gotta throw his name out there, Clint Capella. He was a guy that I said will have to have a, a big game and dominate and show the Hornets that, hey, you might need to invest in some bigs because he was absolute terror last, last night. Yes. I'm talking about three blocks and the yes. double-double. Double-doubles in the first half. Over, yeah, first right. half. Like I'm just like, okay, Clint know what time it is. CC is out there balling, and I love what o Okongu was doing as well, blocking shots. Yeah, You know, so it's just – the way the bigs play, I, I think they step, they step, they stepped up, they answered the call, and they are definitely going to have to answer the call tomorrow night against yes. the Cleveland Car Cavaliers because, like you said, you just named it. Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, if he plays, and you have Laura Marketing, that is a huge front court. So we shall see. Yes, we shall see. So, yes, yeah, CC did it for the culture last night, and we are about to do it for the culture again. We're going to talk a little bit about – Something that was very odd to us that really we don't understand because when history can be made, why not let history be made? And we're also going to do a tribute to one of our fallen who really had an impact on our musical culture and landscape here in Atlanta, but really across the sports landscape as well when we return. So come back. You can hear about all of that in For the Culture right here on ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra.